Hello, sixth grade, how are you? Today we're going to start our first virtual class here on YouTube. Hope that you're doing well. The topic for today is ratio and fractions. You can see my contact information on the bottom just in case you have any questions. Four. Uh, for three dogs, there are four cats. Today we're going to begin the topic on ratios and fractions. This is something that we talked about last week. Um, here you can see a ratio and a fraction expressed in two separate ways, but it's basically just a combination of numbers that's a comparison between the two. This math antics video is an amazing video just to teach the basics of what ratios are. Um, if you want to take a look at it, it's math antics, ratios, and rates. And it talks a little bit about the fact that it's a comparison between two numbers, that we compare the numbers um, by putting one number over another number. In this case, you can see that it is also expressed as a fraction. And that if you want to compare two separate things, for example, dogs and cats, we can compare those by writing the ratio 3 to 2. There are 3 to 2 dogs. Now, there's more examples that are more complicated inside of the video, which I'm going to show you right now. Inches tall. Ah, here's another good ratio that you might use in your car. 40 miles per hour. Aha! Didn't you say that a ratio was a relationship between two numbers? But 40 miles per hour is just one number. Looks like someone's got some explaining to do. Actually, there are two numbers. Do you remember how any number can be written like a fraction just by writing one as the bottom number? Well, 40 miles per hour is the ratio 40 miles per one hour. Well, I guess you have an answer for everything, don't you? 40 miles per one hour is a type of ratio that we call a rate. A rate is just a ratio that usually involves a period of time. Here are some common examples of rates. 10 meters per second, $12 per hour, three meals per day, 50 games per year. Notice that the bottom numbers in each of these ratios relate to a period of time, seconds, hours, days, years. And that's why we call them a rate. All right, so that's simple enough. But you might be wondering, why are the bottom numbers of all these rates one? Couldn't you have a rate like 90 meters per nine seconds or $60 per five hours? We sure could. But most of the time, when we have rates like that, we want to convert them into an equivalent rate that has one as the bottom number. And that's because whenever the bottom number represents only one unit of time, like one hour or one day, it makes comparing different rates much easier. We've worked with simplifying fractions since second grade. Here you can see an example of the same fraction, just in two separate ways. For example, we can simplify this fraction, 8 24 or 8 over 24, by finding simple factors that they have in common. And we can divide both of those factors by the same number. So 8 divided by 8 is 1, and 24 divided by 8 is 3. So our simple answer would just be 1 third. Here are a couple other examples after we found the greatest common factor and then divided both the numerator and denominator by them. 3 twelfths can be simplified to 1 fourth. 14 forty ninths can be simplified to 2 sevenths. We divided both sides by 7. 52 over 130 can be simplified as 2 fifths. We divided both sides by 26. We're going to see another example with cars and rates, this time using miles. We don't use miles in Costa Rica, but just pretend it's kilometers. Two cars driving at two different rates. The first car's rate is 120 miles per three hours. And the second car's rate is 150 miles per five hours. Which car is going faster? Well, it's not all that easy to tell when the rates have different bottom numbers. Fortunately, it's really easy to change a rate so that it has one as the bottom number. 
All you have to do is divide the top number by the bottom number. The answer you get is the top number of the new equivalent rate, and the bottom number is just one. Rates like this are called unit rates because unit means one. All right, let's convert the rates of speed for our two cars into unit rates so that we can compare them easily. The first car's rate was 120 miles per three hours. So if we take 120 and divide it by three, we get 40. That means that the unit rate for the first car is 40 miles per hour. The second car's It's important to remember that fractions are just another way to write division. If you have a fraction like one half, for example, it's the same as dividing one by two or splitting the one into two equal pieces. This is proven when we write out the equation. If we multiply one half by two, we would get one because if you have two halves, combining them would give you one. It's basically the same thing as saying two times four equals eight is the same as eight divided by four equals two. Now let's talk a little bit about proportions. This next example that we're going to do uh, gives us a problem where we have 23 books and the person wants to figure out how long it's going to take them to read all 23 books. So let's try to figure this out. What information do we know? Well, we know that one book takes two days to read. So there's our ratio or our proportion. So what we do is we take our ratio one to two, one book every two days, and we set it up with our problem that we know, the 23 books. We put those in the same row so that we can later on figure out how many days it will take for this person to read 23 books. There are several ways that you can figure this problem out. This is one of the strategies which is called cross multiplying. We first start by writing down a new equal sign because cross multiplying will give us another equation. Next, imagine that a crisscross shape, like an X, is overlaid on the proportion. This cross shape tells you which numbers to multiply together on each side of the new equal sign. One and N will be multiplied together on this side of the equation, and two and 23 will be multiplied together on the other side of the equation. Oh, and as long as you follow the crisscross guides, it doesn't matter which pair goes on which side. Okay, so our proportion has been rearranged. Now what? Well, on one side of the new equation, we have two numbers being multiplied together. The next step is to go ahead and simplify by doing that multiplication. 2 times 23 equals 46. But what about the other side of the equation? That has a number being multiplied by our unknown letter n. Anytime we multiply a number by one, we're basically just saying that that number is itself. So we can pay, basically just get rid of that one. Anytime we multiply a number by one, we're basically just saying that that number is itself. So we can just get rid of that one. N equals 46, or the number of days it takes to read 23 books is 46 days. Here we have a simple ratio with a bar model. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the total number of, let's just say, teachers, which is 32, and we're going to use the ratio 5 to 3. Uh, let's say there are five male teachers to every three female teachers. Um, if we count the total number of um, numbers represented in the ratio, for example, 5 plus 3, we're going to come up with 8. So we can take that total number, the 32, and we can divide it into eight separate and equal parts. If we uh, divide 32 by eight, we get four because four times eight is 32. And we can separate this out into the ratio, just like we have five to three. Um, you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five male teachers to every one, two, three female teachers. And we're going to just take that number four, um, and we're just going to put that inside of each one of those bars. So four plus four plus four plus four plus four. And we also have the female teachers, another four plus four plus four. Now, it's important that we understand that each one of these is equal. 
Um, we cannot have um, groups that are not equal. And to figure out how many are in each group, now that we have the ratio and the number all together, we can just multiply that by the, uh, the number of bars. So we have three bars here, multiply four times three, which equals 12 female teachers. And we have um, five bars here, which represent the male teachers times the four, five times four is 20. So we can figure out that we have 20 male teachers to every 12 female teachers. We're gonna play this game, um, we have a ratio of six to eight. Playground.com. It's the Ratio Blaster. And let's begin. All right. 